Like and subscribe right now or this spider will crawl on your face while you're sleeping. Over the centuries, people have evolved and their way of living has evolved with them. But in some aspects of life, we use ancient methods to get by because they are the most useful ones. Hunting is the first ever occupation known to man. Their survival depends on hunting and mankind found some brilliant and strange ways of hunting over the centuries. Some of the techniques are even seen today around the world. Let's look at 10 strange ways hunters used to hunt. Number 10. Kleptoparasitism Kleptoparasitism is a form of feeding in which one animal takes prey or another food that was caught, collected, or otherwise prepared by another animal, including stored food. Stealing meat from lions seems like a poor choice. However, the Maboro herdsmen of Cameroon have done it for centuries. They use flaming sticks to chase big cats. The technique is common among large predators, but otherwise little documented in man. With lions growing increasingly wary of people, kleptoparasitism has become easier for humans. Reports from Cameroon, Uganda, and Tanzania indicate the practice is on the upswing. This is bad news for big cats. They expend tremendous amounts of energy bringing down prey. If their sustenance is stolen, it could have a massive impact on survival rates. Some fear human kleptoparasitism might eradicate entire lion populations. Number 9. Trout Tickling Getting a free dinner is not a laughing matter. The ancient fishing technique of trout tickling is as serious as they come, requiring a whole lot of stealth and patience. With no equipment required, the technique asks that you wait by the trout hole downstream. Next, lie stomach down on your back, reach into the water, and feel for trout. When you feel the trout come your way, tickle the belly from head to foot to lull the fish into a daze. Once you reach the hand, tug the fish out of the water and keep your catch. Used by the poor in Europe, this activity was once common knowledge, and those who perfected their game got to eat like kings wherever they were. They couldn't afford equipment or pay to fish on private land, so it's generally considered a form of poaching. Gypsy guitarist Django Reinhardt, the first notable European jazz musician, was known as an expert trout tickler. Number 8. Golden Eagle Hunting The Burkitschi are members of Mongolia's ethnic Kazakh minority that use golden eagles to stalk prey. For them, golden eagles are an important part of their hunting technique. Riding on horseback, the hunters search for prey with the birds hanging on their arms, ready to jump at any given moment. A hunter and his bird are deeply bonded, having been together for most of the animal's life. While the birds live up to 30 years, the hunters release them into the wild after 10, giving them free reign over the land. The hunters capture eagles live, four-year-old birds are ideal. At this age, they've developed hunting skills, yet are still able to be trained. Only females are used, their wingspan is larger, and they're more ferocious than males. The eagles are domesticated, fed by hand, and even sleep with their captors. The birds die wild. Golden eagle hunting will soon be extinct. The Bikichi are disappearing. They're believed to be only 50 or 60 left practicing this ancient nomadic lifestyle. Number 7. Aboriginal Fire Hunting Australians had to be on this list. The Martu people of Australia's western desert are known to use fire to hunt lizards. The result has benefited the wildlife of the outback. The technique creates a small patchwork of cleared land, perfect habitat for bush critters. Goanna, a type of lizard, is the Martu's most valuable resource. These burrowing lizards make up 40% of their caloric intake. The Martu technique of goanna hunting is thousands of years old. In the winter, lizards hibernate, women cover burrow entrances and set the surrounding grass ablaze. Without this technique, the brush becomes overgrown. Unchecked growth is perfect fodder for lighting fires, which can be devastating for mammalian habitat. The practice is such an integral part of the Martu culture that their language has a word for every stage of the post-fire vegetation growth. Number 6. Snake Noodling in Africa for the thrill-seekers out there, there's noodling for pythons in Africa. Noodling typically refers to fishing for catfish using your bare hands. This is done by placing your hand inside a hole and letting the catfish latch onto your arm. 
Noodling for pythons works much in the same way, except in some cases the noodler uses his leg instead for a particularly large python. Oh, and of course you're reaching into a snake hole instead of a catfish hole. Consequently, you may want to wrap your arm in a sturdy layer of animal skin to help protect it. And make sure the guys that are going to pull you free of the snake hole know what your signal is since Africa is home to the adder, the mamba, and several species of cobra. You may want to practice your snake identification skills before you go climbing into holes in the ground. That's a lot of instructions, so we just advise you to stay away from this hunting practice. Number 5. Rat Hunting with Dogs Rat hunting involves an incredible amount of coordination for such a small quarry. Reports from mid-19th century London describe using terriers and ferrets to curb the city's monstrous infestation. The ferrets chased the rats out of their holes and the dogs dealt the end. Many dog-like breeds we now consider lap dogs were specifically developed to hunt vermin. New York has turned to traditional methods to help curb its abundance of rats, specifically trained Jack Russells, Fox Terriers, and Dachshunds and their owners prowl the shadows in search of bugs. This is hunting for extermination. One camp views this as a time-honored tradition. Animal rights activists view it as cruelty. It's hard to say this is less humane than poisoning, which leaves rats fatally ill for hours. What's more, these poisoned rats pass toxins on to anything that eats them. Number 4. Persistence Hunting Most experts believe we fed our rapidly developing brains first as hunters, then as endurance runners. Our posture and naked skin with sweat glands are designed for rapid cooling. Our large butt muscles and elastic tendons allow us to run much more efficiently than other animals. Humans are ungainly creatures, but no animal in the world can match our stamina. Persistence hunting is still practiced by the Kalahari Bushmen of Botswana and the Raramuri people of northern Mexico. Modern fitness enthusiasts have also started to experiment with this ancient technique. Many of these fit folk are vegetarians. They're more interested in theoretical applications than a means of sustenance. Thanks to the development of the human body over hundreds of thousands of years, we have some of the most impressive stamina levels in the animal kingdom. Maybe even the best, as stated above. It makes sense then that human stealth has been used as a part of hunting for thousands of years. In some parts of the world, hunting techniques have barely changed, taking influence from models put in place generations ago. The activity of persistence puts the men in the heart of the action as they track down and kill their own prey by hand. Number 3. Gum Lime Sticks Bird hunting is an ancient part of many cultures in the world and there's no shortage of poachers. Their hunting technique is simple and ancient, but some techniques are better and more creative than others. For poachers in Cyprus, songbirds were the prime target. They used lime sticks covered in ultra-sticky gum derived from Syrian plums. Placed in the lower reaches of juniper trees, the sticks provided perfect landing spots for the birds, who were then encaptured by the material. The prey of the traditional Cypriot bird hunters is blackcaps, a common European bird considered an island delicacy. The problem with the gum stick technique is that there is tremendous bycatch of endangered species. Many organizations and volunteers are working to stop the songbird slaughter. The challenge is daunting. The lime sticks do tremendous damage to the birds. They're often fatally wounded in the rescue process. When you can't catch something with your bare hands, what do you do? Luckily, there's a whole world of sticky material out there just waiting to be put to use. The technique proved to be so effective that it's even used today, causing a massive decline in the songbird population. And with that, it's now time for today's subscriber pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber, if you come across a photo online and want to know more details about it, just send it over to us. We might even feature it on a future video. Number 2 Looks like this picture was photoshopped as we couldn't find anything related to it on the internet. But we get the idea behind this picture. People around the world have created many creative ways to catch fish as it's a part of their lives. Some fishing is a source of income in some of the poorest countries in the world. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you'll get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it. It really works.
Number one, flounder tramping. Flounder are a flatfish known for their white, flaky flesh. Their low profile and liking for crabs often means that they're found in the shallows around estuaries. Ingenious hunters have found out how to harvest this delicious fish with a diabolically simple technique. They step on them. Flounder tramping is a traditional fishing technique used in the southwest of Scotland for centuries. The process is simple. You walk along the mud flats until you step on a flounder. At this point, a fight against instinct occurs. Every impulse tells you to remove your foot from the fish. However, you must stand firm or the quarry will escape. Some trampers also employ a stick which they use behind their shuffling feet. On the first Saturday of August, the small town of Palnacky, Scotland hosts the World Flounder Tramping Competition. The fun is broadcast throughout the UK and Australia. That's our list of 10 strangest ways hunters ever use to hunt down prey. Which one do you think is the most efficient? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.